Look at that. Beautiful, gentle breeze. Got the new shrubs sticking out back here. Looking just fantastic. Love having them over there. Got the bamboo all cleaned up. There was a lot of dead stuff sitting in there. See all that? Got that cut out and things are just looking nice. And I got the fountain up and running, which I, did, I didn't film it. I was going to and then I was like, you know what? We've done this before, like many, many, many times. And I did change the pot so it does look different than it has the last several years. So I put this, I think it's called the Miami planter from Le Beau. That that's how we say it? I'm pretty sure that's how we say it. That's what's in the center. Just wanted something with some more height on it. And then I filled the top, partially filled it because I need to get some more. Ran out with these glass chips and then there was a slight flow issue why are we not focusing autofocus you're not you're not here today what's going on there we go had autofocus turned off that was that was stupid there's a flow issue here i had to try a different pump we'll talk about that some more but basically it's just the same thing i've done with any of the fountains i've ever done out here same thing i did in that fountain video I did tweak some things like i said we'll talk about that later what i want to do since my sunscreen's still fresh and the sun is out and it's absolutely just stunning outside today, though chilly, kind of cold. Let's uh, go to a greenhouse. There's a greenhouse out here called Weethop, Weethop, Weethop. Not really sure the pronunciation there, but go there about every single spring and check out the plants and see what they have. They're only open for a couple of months. They usually have a lot of annuals and tropicals. Some house plants, I don't know, it's different every year, but I just figured since it's kind of cold, I'm not really feeling being outside despite it being so sunny and beautiful. I may as well head out there and see what they have. Flaky skin check. That sunscreen on top of that retinol. They don't layer very well together, so everywhere I go lately, I've just been looking scaly. How exciting. I don't, you can't see anything there, can you? Was that gross? Chicken for flakies in the video? I hope not. But if there was anything, maybe I'll blur it out. I don't know. Oh, ho, ho. it's loud. It's very loud. Look at all the plants. So many. They just keep going and going and going and going and going. That was so cute. I've done some. Rearranging in here. A lot more house plants. Oh, look at the little kiwis. Look at it. The aisles, they just keep going and going. So much to look at. Also, there are a lot of people here. It's going to be tricky to film. Some nice looking petunias. Uh, I see the sun patients on the other side. They're pretty. Pretty brawlias. Love the purple that those have on them. It's hard to find nice purple flowers. Supertunia Vista bubblegums. Unfortunately, it's too early to plant a lot of these things, but still nice to be able to get in and see the selection. And I'm sure that there will be plenty of things that could be planted right now. What are you? What is this? What are these? Gulf Beauty Crispidia. That's neat looking. I want to know more about this one. Very neat. I'll be doing some more reading on those. These some little tiny calendulas. Uh, fun. It smells heavenly over there. All that lobularia. Oh, love it. So sweet. Plenty of strobilanthes. Lots of Persian shields. There they are. Look at all of them. So many beautiful. Beautiful sun patients. I'm wondering if they have the landscape size ones. Those have been harder to find the last few years. I have to order them if I want to plant those this year. This is very difficult. The amount of self-restraint I'm going to have to exercise in here is ridiculous because it's just there's no reason to buy these yet. There's nothing that can be done with them. It's way too soon to get them out to the ground. I don't want to take care of them in the house. Just wait like three more weeks get going on those. Like I said, most of it's just fun to be in here to get to look around, browse, and see what the selection's like. That's a fun Tritoscantia. Don't know what kind it is, but it's very pretty. Oh, now nooks are very long. <laughs> very long. Down here, it looks like there's a lot of begonias 
and fillers. Looks like there's some of those big, fun silver senecios down here. So pretty, the angel wings. That's what that is right there. Really pretty plants. They have an awesome texture. It's one of those plants where when I have them, like I, just, I can't stop touching them. Lantana on the right, Angelonia, just over all that, all that down there. It's like some sunflowers. Oh, Tithonia. I had trouble with these the last couple years. I think it's just been too wet where I've been putting them. Do I try again? Maybe these are really nice, big ones. Hmm. I'm gonna think about that. Grasses and fillers. Always fun to have those. Oh my goodness. There's just so much. So much. It's kind of overwhelming. Oh, grabber daisies. Some nasturtiums, various morning glories and cardinal flowers, moon flowers, and the moon vine. That is. I was hoping they might have some passion flowers, but I don't see any. That's okay. I mean, I have one. I just, I want another one. Love it. So pretty. Beautiful coleus. Wow. These are some pretty Gerber daisies. Very nice. Very pretty. Just prepare for me to just walk up to things and say, hey, that's neat. That's pretty. There's only so much you can say. Cannas, geraniums, so many things. I'm seeing tropicals. I said, let's just go right for the tropicals. That's all I really care about. There's a lot. There used to just be like two or three aisles. Looks like it's mostly hibiscus, majesty palms, some oleanders, some beautiful mandevillas over here. Aren't they beautiful? So much color. Oh, and also excellent hanging baskets. Oh, I forgot about the fans. It's about to get very, very loud. Look at it. So much color. The Alice Duponts. The white ones over on the other side. Lots of just the regular red. Rosa Sinensis. Man, they're so, they're always beautiful, but when you see them in a mass grouping like this, it's just like, it's its a bit much. It's like hard to take it in. Fun, pretty plants. You know, I'm surprisingly kind of into the yellow hibiscus trees that I see on the other side. Not normally my thing, the yellow, but it's like a yellowy orange. And I really, ooh, oh, hello. How are you? That's beautiful. Okay, bring it on. It looks like the this pretty, Shade of orange is only on the ones that are like multiple. It's a multi-graph. I don't like those. That's too bad. That's a shame. Oh, I don't like them as much when I'm over here. They're all scrawny and kind of pathetic looking. The flowers are pretty though. I love that orange. Maybe I could get one and just cut the other graphs out. Why don't, that? that's a good idea. That's doable. Also, eat your heart out, lantana lovers. Look at all these lantana standards. Don't know if I'm gonna do anything with those this year. Maybe I will, I don't know. Okay, who did this? That is so freaking rude. Other people here, come on now. There's too much, I'm overwhelmed. Nice looking bamboo palms. The price isn't too bad. I was tempted to grab one, but I just remember what a pain they were with the mealybugs. I don't feel like dealing with all that again. Ooh -hoo. Various calatheas, got some big orbifolias over there. They're like really big. Good size. Look at those. Big, big leaves. Alocasias. Macaulay's finale. Philodendrons. Those look great. Calathea exotica. These, I don't know. Oh, look at the cute tiny little Eugenias. Yes. Those are adorable. Oh, those are some nice sized thematophyllums. You just, the regulars? Oh, that's labeled as a Monstera Deliciosa. Nope, not what that is. Look like they might be the lickety splits. See how heavy those lobes are, how deep they go in. Very pretty. Here's where all the smaller things are. The other side were bigger plants. Oh, look at all these begonias. Nice begonias. I love the begonias. Too soon. Stop it. 
and then the smaller sun patients over here. It's nice to have that option for mass plantings, not have to get things in those great big expensive sizes. They grow so fast it just isn't necessary. A wall of really cool looking hibiscus over here. The fun ones are in the smaller pots. Fun. Walked all the way back down there just to show y'all that one. What did you think? I think it looks like eggs. Reverse eggs. These are so stinking adorable. Look at how tiny they are. Freaking cute. They have a ton of herbs and veggies that are like big up and ready to go. Look at the size of these tomatoes. They're huge. Peppers and greens and corn. Like just basically everything. Tons and tons and tons to pick from. Hey, that's not bad. 18 bucks. And here it is. One of my favorite parts about coming to this place is just this gorgeous wall of caladiums. Look at them. There's so many. Ooh. Summer Breeze. What a great name. Yes. That, that looks like a summer breeze. Hey. These look familiar. These are the mesmerized caladiums. Celebration, huh? Just saucy. That's a great color on them. Look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, it's real noisy up here, so here's just a last look. Then I gotta go, cause the cart's full. So I'm gonna have to go back and have a little plant haul. These are fun. Look at the leaves on these. What is this? Debutante. Uh, really? It's not what I remember mine looking like, like, at all. Well, this is also debutante. You know, caladiums can have a lot of variation in their foliage. Time of year, temperature, all those fun things. Ooh hoo hoo. Like you. Desert sunset. That's not. No, mine have never looked like that before. That's cool. Well, I'm finally home. I was gonna bring the plants out so we could do a little plant haul, but don't know how it's showing on camera. It's snowing. That's that's stupid. Oh, it is actually very pretty. So I guess it's okay. It's like 34. Surprisingly doesn't feel that cold and I don't have anything out here that can't handle 34 degrees so I'm not stressed out about it. It's not going to <laughs> stick or accumulate. Turbo doesn't mind. He likes the snow. 34 degrees and he's been in and out of the pool twice already. I don't like when he swims when it's this cold because you have to dry him off and get him in the house immediately because they could get hypothermia. So no one's supervised time out here for Turbo as long as it's this cold and the pool's open. What is happening? Not supposed to be snowing. It does not look like much on camera. It's like just above a flurry, I would say. The wind got a branch on the peach tree. Poor peach tree. We'll get get to a plant tour here as soon as it warms up and I can bring them outside and we have some good light. Plant tour, plant haul. That's what I was trying to say. All right, you got to come inside. You can't stay out here. No, you're going to get in the pool. Running out of towels. Pumpkin, where are you going? Hi, Pumpkin. Come here, come back. You gonna take me on a tour? Oh, you're waiting for cookies. All about the cookie parties with you. There you go. Enjoy your cookies. It is a beautiful day. Finally, it has been so, well, you've seen it. Cold, rainy, and just blech. By cold and rainy, I mean snowy. <laughs> what the heck was that about? Forecast says it might happen again in several days. Also, I just realized my mic isn't set up. That's okay, the camera audio is still on. I went ahead and I brought the plants out. We can go have a look at them there, back there behind the wall. And then uh, I got it, I had a new power washer. The one that was in the shop, apparently it's it's dead. I'm gonna do some cleaning. I haven't used a power washer in years because the one I had has been broken for years. Oh, it's gonna be so satisfying. Also a lot of work though, because I, I have to, I'm gonna have to get everything off the patio, which I don't see myself actually doing, but we can work on it in sections. I'll handle it. We'll get to that later. First, let's look at the plants. Spring. It's been a few days since that other clip. It's that time of year. We just have to shuffle everything I'm doing because one minute it's sunny, one minute it's raining, and have to prioritize certain projects over the others. But the, the main thing, I need to, we need to look at these plants. I've been holding on to these things for like a solid week now. Okay, not a solid week, like four days, five days still been dying to show off these plants. Got everything all lined up over here on the wall. It is too cold to be keeping these outside. Well, not really. The past few days have been very nice for them, but they'll have to come back in the house at some point. So just don't, don't think that because I'm about to show you a bunch of tropical plants that are outdoors, it means it's okay. It's still 
getting chilly here. We just, we've had a warmer system moving through. But you can see here, it's mostly caladiums and a cordelin fruticosa kiwi. It's adorable. I absolutely love it. Well, I am just a sucker for the caladiums. I grabbed two of these white Christmas caladiums. Does anybody have a label? Never mind. I grabbed three of them. There it is. White Christmas. The white Christmas caladiums tend to be a, a caladium that does get larger, which is one of the reasons I like them. They're great for the shade to part shade, sometimes even part sun, depending on your climate. Anytime I can have a white caladium in the shade, I like to jump on it because the white in that leaf helps draw the eye back into darker areas. And the white Christmas, like I said, I mean, you can see here, it's a larger caladium. So these will keep getting bigger throughout the season and they uh, fill in a space very nicely, draw the eye back. And again, it's just a, just a nice caladium because of that size. This is just in a little six inch pot and it's got all that on it already. So I expect to see some nice growth out of these this year. They're all a little bit different. It's how things go with variegated plants, various levels of fullness. They're very pretty, very lovely. And look at those two together. Oh, they make good friends. That's beautiful. All right, so there's the white Christmas. Beautiful caladium. I don't know how specific the tag's going to be on this size. This is 12 to 24 inches, and I would really expect these to get close to that 24 inch range. So as I mentioned, they do get larger and they have them labeled as a full shade caladium. So go ahead and trust that tag. I've had them on many occasions. I've seen them like just around the corner, planters my palm, where they get a good amount of morning sun and then shade throughout the rest of the day. Generally speaking, white caladiums are better for shade and the more red they have in them, usually the more sun they can take. So here's the next, see, another white one. It's got a bunch of junk in it from the pine trees. This one is called Allure and it's just a very nice all white caladium. Not a ton to it. Another one with nice big leaves, look at that. Great big, huge leaves. Both of these are pretty common. Sometimes I even get these in the mixed bag bulb caladiums. Probably will have many more of these on that note because I have some big bagged varieties of caladium bulbs that are ready to go in the ground here in a few weeks. So there will be more of these, but it's, some, it's just something nice about... <laughs> don't know what happened there with my brain. There's something nice about just knowing that they've already been labeled and sorted out. So I'll know for sure, okay, this is white Christmas. I'm going to put these over an area where I want some nice big white leaves as opposed to having to wait for the bulbs to sprout and then go, okay, I think that that's what this is, but there's like 20 other types of caladiums that look pretty identical, but maybe get to be a different size. Sometimes it's just nice having the plants outside of the assortment. That's what was going on there. I like this one for the same reason as the white Christmas, both just very, very, very pretty caladiums. And then another very pretty caladium. Y'all probably knew I was gonna get this when you saw it at the store, right? And look at those leaves. It's so pretty. That is a big, beautiful leaf. And the sinus that's on these caladiums here, I guess the sinus is about the same really on all of them. But for some reason on this one, it stands out more to me as being more narrow. But really it isn't. When you, you look at the others, it's actually probably more wide. Whatever, you get the point. It just, it has a slightly different look to it. Maybe the leaves are a little bit more heart-shaped. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Or just the pattern. Every single leaf, different pattern, looking just stunning. Smaller foliage coming out with more mottled variegation on it. Larger leaves have the bigger, more red, intense splotchiness on them. Isn't that just, I mean, come on, look, look at that one. Isn't that beautiful? Has a bunch of those awesome aeroid flowers in there too. Look at that one. Come on now, you don't wanna focus? Has a bunch of flowers on the inside. So these are actually pushing to maturity already. So I'm gonna have to remember to get those potted up as soon as possible. As soon as it's warm enough for them to handle it, those need to go into a new container. The Just Saucy, which is what these are. Sorry, it took me so long to remember to actually show you the label. This one is labeled as a part shade to sun, which makes sense, see all that? red in there, I would assume it could handle an okay amount of sun. And the tag says 14 to 16 inches tall, which yeah, that's probably, that makes sense. I mean, look, at it's already putting out flowers and everything at this size. So that means it's about to maturity at the size that it's at. If it's already putting out flowers, you're not even about to maturity, it is at maturity. So I grabbed two of these. It's very windy, but I gotta push through it. So it's just gonna keep being windy and stormy. I'm never gonna get this done. Oh, with this one, I did like between the pictures and the plants, there's a lot of variation. So I think that maybe leaves like this might be an outlier and I should probably be more expecting 
leaves kind of like this one or this right here where there's a lot more green mixed in with everything or even really just larger versions of these on the inside. I don't know if I really gave you a good picture of those leaves in there, but that's what they look like. Ah, there's a lot of variation between this picture and what I see in the plant, which I think I kind of mentioned when I was at the nursery. There's going to be variation with things that are greenhouse grown than then just like the size of the plant, what level of growing it's at. Sometimes it takes a plant like a caladium some time to get to the size where it's going to show off its mature leaf shape and color and temperature can influence that, the amount of sun they're getting. Lots of factors can go into when you have this kind of variegation. So I don't really actually know what these are going to look like come like mid to late summer. I'm hoping something like this or like that back there. Very pretty, but if it is just more like these, that's okay too. Those are beautiful. And the last of the caladiums is the summer breeze. It's another big white leaf that has some blushiness on the inside with a really pretty kind of chartreuse lime green on the outside. The foliage is more thin and feels more delicate on these. More of a nice comparison between the other white ones over here. It's just the same as those, but with a hint of color. Not too much red, more of a pink. A blush pink with red veining. I don't know how well it's going to show on camera. You see how I turn it? You can see different colors and variations in the foliage. Really just, I just liked it. Tags is 12 to 24 inches on that one too. That would be interesting because I've had a lot of white caladiums in the past that have this sort of blushy tone on the inside, like ones that come in those assorted bags that I was talking about, but I don't know what they are because they come in a big bag as assorted plants, right? So I'd never know how big they're going to get. This says 12 to 24 inches and there's still a good amount of growing left to do. This, these are the least full of all of them. There's a good amount of stuff going on in the bottom of this one. Good amount of growth in there, but still, I feel like these still have the most growing to do compared to some of these others that I showed over here. Uh, can I help you? You're all wet. Get out of here. Turbo out, out. So pretty. Love the caladiums. Excellent plants. And then I did grab this Cordelin fraticasa. This is a kiwi, I believe, although it wasn't labeled, but it looks like the Cordelin fraticasa kiwi, which is one that tends to stay smaller-ish and has this green and yellow with the pink on the undersides and on the outsides of the foliage. I already know what I'm going to do with this. Let me see if I can find the pot that I want to put it in. Isn't that cute? This is the perfect planter for that little cordelin. Obviously you need to straighten that out and make it look better, but I think that's fun. Isn't that cute? Goes well together. I am going to take that out of there immediately because I can just see the dog jumping up there and knocking this thing over. I don't want this pot to get broken. So there's that. And there are, there are a few more plants. I went to another nursery. I didn't film it because I was in and out very quickly, but there's a lot more to show. And I got some more of these. But from Weethop, this labeled as a dwarf banana, which can mean all kinds of things when it comes to bananas. But generally it just means it's one of the acumena to types. You see that fun little trunk in there. It's very nice and girthy. I would imagine this will probably get up another foot to foot and a half taller, something like that. And then we'll probably start to suck her out. That's just a guess because without a label that actually says what it is, I'll never know. But I thought it was cute. I like the little trunk on it. Nice stubby, stout, chubby little banana tree. It's so stinking cute. I love the acumen to bananas. Okay, and then the taller plants. It's very windy. So I've just, the wind blew them over and I said, okay, you can just stay there. It's gonna keep getting knocked over and it's gonna damage the plant some more. This is a lantana tree. I, that's really all there is to say about it. It's just, it's a lantana tree. One that I'm going to go ahead and set down on the ground, actually. Let's go ahead and put this down here. I was a little worried about the dog chewing on these. That's why I had them set up here, but it's been a few days and he hasn't paid any attention to them. So I think they're okay down here now. There's no label as to what kind it is and it's lost some flowers since I brought it home. So I have to wait for it to flush out again to really get a good look at, but it was one that has a lot of orange and pink in it. It's a classic lantana with that lantana smell that I'm not really a fan of. I know some of y'all love it. It's, it's not for me. Stinky, stinky plants and then a hibiscus. Look at this one. Isn't that just beautiful. I'm not that into yellow flowers normally. I don't know why, it's just not my thing. But over the last few years, they've started to grow on me. There's a variety from like the Hollywood hibiscus series. You used to see it Lowe's and Home Depot that was called Chatty Cathy. And I really like that one. And that's what this reminds me of. And I don't know if this has a label. I think it just says, you know, it just says tropical. I could have sworn there was a tag on this. Stuff. Oh, there it is on the pot, mellow yellow. And this is an interesting setup here instead of it being standardized or braided it's just a few plants that are all put onto a stick together 
I don't really necessarily know why, but yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Whatever. That's an interesting way to do things, I suppose. Just put all the sticks onto a stake. Don't bother braiding them together and just leave it. I don't mind that, actually. The braids, I think, look neat, but longevity-wise, they're not always my favorite. So this is, this is cool. I suppose I'll have to... Uh, figure out if I want to separate those and standardize or twist them or just try and get a bigger stake into them. That was the only issue I really had with this was I was like, I don't really know what to do with this one moving forward, like a few years from now, or really even this time next year when there's just loose branches in here like that. There are plenty of things that can be done creatively, I suppose, but I really feel like it's all just kind of kicking the bucket down the road to the plant being sort of wonky and weird looking if you don't do something really solid with it. But I still liked it. You remember they had some trees that had these flowers on them, but they just, they didn't look great. They didn't look bad. They were just really scrawny. Didn't seem worth the price to me. So that's why I went with this one because it was much more full. There's one, two, three, four large trunks in there. Trunks, sticks in there that are growing together for the same price so it was just to me it was like okay that's much more bang for your buck i can thin this out down low and start to do some fun stuff with it up top and just get to enjoy those pretty hibiscus flowers very 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 pretty hibiscus oh my gosh it's so pretty love that flower neat looking hibiscus there isn't really much else to say other than it's planted in an interesting way and i like the flowers it's a hibiscus i did also grab one of those ones with the orange on it. Let's go have a look at that one. Turbo, what did you do? That was my kneeling pad. Turned my back on him for like six minutes. He has toys everywhere. That was very rude, Turbo. Where are you? I heard the noise in the background, but I thought he was playing with one of his toys because this is making the same... Jeez. Ah, Whatever. It is what it is. Here's that one that had the pretty orange flowers on it last time you saw it. Those have since faded. So there isn't really much to look at there. As far as that's concerned, the problem with this one, oh, there's a little bit of an orange flower left down here. You can kind of get an idea of that flower. But again, you saw it at the nursery. This one, I noticed that after I brought it home, covered in aphids, like just covered. I've sprayed it multiple times. I have it somewhat moved away from the other plants. I didn't notice that at the nursery. I noticed that there is like a granular substance on some of the foliage, but I was like, oh, that's probably just some sort of insecticide dust or powder or something like that. I didn't think much of it and then I just convinced myself that it was fine because I really wanted the plant. I probably shouldn't have gotten this one. It's not the healthiest looking. Uh-uh, out. I've just been using soap on it. So it's safe with the dog and with the pollinators and everything. I have never had to water a plant so much in my entire life. Not even kidding. Like three times a day. If this hasn't been getting watered, it shrivels. It needs to be repotted pretty much immediately. It's going to be warmer tomorrow, so I think that I'll go ahead and do that. Normally I like to wait until we get into May to do repots on the tropicals, but it's not going to live that long because I'm not going to water it three times a day. I can already tell you, it's, that's not going to happen. Not consistently anyway. So when I got this, I was thinking, okay, well, it's a graft. I can cut off the others just the regular red and then the one with that dark eye right there these are not my favorite i've talked about it before it's pretty yes especially on the camera it looks much prettier than it actually is it's much it's like there's a beauty filter on there don't trust it it's still ugly all right ugly is a bit extreme just not my taste however this is a braid not a graft i mean it looks like it might be a braid with a graft more than likely but i can't there's not i can't separate it I mean, probably could. I don't know. Worry about that down the road. Doesn't really matter. The hibiscus plants that I got are mostly like for iguana and tortoise food. So they'll be pruned on. There'll be a lot of stuff happening with them. And uh, I'm going to just enjoy those orange flowers and just pretend the other ones aren't there, which is fine. I would love to find one that just had those orange flowers on it, but I haven't seen it. I'm sure it's around somewhere, but it doesn't matter. I do like having just the regular classic red hibiscus around. So this is sort of a get your cake and eat it too situation. I just, this is this one. Stop it. No, I'm joking mostly. The story behind why I dislike that actual flower, the one with the dark eye, the pink with the dark eye, is more a story of resentment from my childhood, which will make more sense in a minute. I wanted the orange and I was willing to just accept the fact that it was on a triple. A plant with three different flowers on it. I don't really like when they do that. I understand the appeal for a lot of people. It's just for me, aesthetically, not really my thing. Although, who cares about my aesthetics? Look at the background over here, right? 
So don't be insulted if you love this. That's great. You do you. I understand the appeal. Just not really my thing. I would rather have big shows of flowers all across the plant instead of three different flowers that are maybe going to bloom intermittently and I'll be mixed in. It, it doesn't matter. You get it. I'm looking forward to seeing it grow and see what it does. I'm holding the camera up right now because I'm trying to not show off too much because I have another plant haul. Very briefly ran by another nursery that I go to fairly often on this channel called Greenscape Gardens. Uh, there have been plenty of videos of me going there and shopping there so I didn't really film it. And I was in and out fairly fast. There wasn't much to show because I was, like I just mentioned, I was in a bit of a hurry. But I grabbed a few things. It's more than a few. Let's have a look. Many more plants to look at. Mostly hibiscus and some cordolins and a few other things. So I actually went there with the intent of hoping they would have some of these seminal pink hibiscus. The seminal pink is my absolute favorite of just the classic kind of old school common type hibiscus. And this brings me back to my issue of resentment I have with that other one over there. Way, way, way back in the past when I was growing up as a kid and then into my teen years, early 20s even, at nurseries, big box stores, they would typically get in the all red, the what it's called Mr. President, whatever, Rosa Sinensis Tropical Hibiscus. And you would sometimes see the orange poofy one still around, still really common, and the seminal pink. Those were the ones that were just, that's what you would expect to find when you'd be out shopping for some tropical hibiscus. And then one year, the pretty beautiful seminal pinks just vanished. They just disappeared at where I live. All the nurseries and big box stores, they didn't have many more. And they switched over to those ones over there with that dark eye in the middle. And that was the pink hibiscus. When you'd order an assortment, you'd get the red, that orange, and then that pink. And I don't like it as much. I don't think it's anywhere near as pretty. Perhaps that other one produces better. Maybe it's better for propagation uses. I don't know. Still doesn't fully make sense to me because the seminal pinks, these are pretty much always the first ones to sell out at the nurseries. So why that other one has taken its place, I don't know. But that's, that's where my history is. It's, I know it's ridiculous with that other one. So I'll admit the other one is pretty. But it displaced my favorite one. These are not as easy to get a hold of anymore. They're not by any means rare. It's just to see the other one a lot more. I grabbed a standard seminal pink. That was the whole reason I actually went to the nursery was because they always sell out first. I knew from looking at their Instagram and their stories, they had shown that they had gotten their hibiscus in. So I was like, okay, I'm just run out there. I'll grab a few of those and then whatever else I can fit in the car because the tropicals sell out very, very, very fast. And I can keep them in the garage for a few weeks and then have fun with them come early May outside. So that's the one standard. And then I grabbed two smaller potted ones. And the, both of the shrub four ones, I don't know if you were wondering, you want the name, there's the name. Seminal pink, just classic pink hibiscus, rosa sinensis, tropical type hibiscus. Look at all the growth down inside of this one though. It's a nice bulky plant. There's a chunk of stem over here that's really thick. So I am hoping for a really good amount of growth out of these this year and they're hibiscus. You get them put up onto drip and everything. They should do a lot of growing. They look pretty good. Some yellowing, that's not that shocking. Hibiscus, you know, you ship them. Sometimes they throw a fit for a week or two afterwards. And you gotta, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at this dork over here. He's learned to stand up on the edge of the pool, which is super cute, but it also really throws, is he, what are you? Oh, he's pulling sticks out of the skimmer. Thanks, Turbo, good job, clean the pool. It's a pine cone in there. I, I remember what I was talking about. They have nice green glossy foliage and I'm not shocked that there's going to be some yellowing, some browning, a little bit of that because it's a very early shipment of tropicals and they tend to not look their best when they come in <laughs> this early in the season. So, and they've been through a lot these last few days, being shipped to the nursery, then being at the nursery inside of their greenhouse and coming home and sitting in my garage for 48 hours where it's warm, but it's still a big change from all the other environments then to being outside, even this faded flower. So pretty. Okay, enough of the hibiscus. You've gotten my background there. Well, that landed in there like it, it was meant to be in that spot, didn't it? Very easily distracted today. There's the hibiscus. We've talked about hibiscus enough. I also grabbed two more of these Cordelin Frotocostas that I believe are the Kiwis. That green and orange variegation with the pink outline. There's one similar to the Kiwi that's called the Harlequin, and that's just it's one of my favorites. It's so pretty, but I haven't seen it around in a while. And it, the Harlequin looks fairly similar. It tends to be more expensive though than some of the others. They're both really nice full plants though. I mean, look at that. Lots of growth on the inside and these are probably a good 24 inches tall. Here's the other one. Isn't that just stunning? 
absolutely beautiful. Love the cordelins. On that note, another one over here that I don't have a name on. I didn't see a name anywhere in the pot or anything like that. What a cool looking plant though, right? Every single leaf, you just, that's how variegated plants work. You don't know what you're going to get, but like this one, beautiful. And then the ones on the inside have more of that pink in them. And then it looks like for the most part, they fade out to being mostly just green with a pink outline on them. And then there are some outliers where they hold on to the white, but it seems like it's a more squat plant with a more ovate, ovally leaf that's much more wide than the strappiness that you get on a lot of the other common protocosts that you see around. Wow, you made a mess. Like I said inside that pool skimmer and you really pulled everything out. I'm not a fan of this new game. Let's stop with that one. Don't shake off. Don't, 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 don't. Get out of here. Turbo? Hey, <laughs> all right, there might be water droplets. There's no actual name for this plant. So if anybody knows, I haven't bothered researching it at all. I'll do some digging and put it up here on the screen as to what I think it might be. Comment down below if you have any idea what you think it is. No, it's a cordelin. Fredericasa of some sort, just not the variety. It's the cultivar that I'm like, uh, I don't think I know you. I don't think I've seen this one before. But I very much like it. Very pretty. Look at all the color in this gorilla cart. Isn't it just beautiful? Wish it wasn't in the gorilla cart. There's no reason for me to unload it and try and make it look nice because tonight it's all got to go back in the garage. It's going to be like 37. That's too cold for them. Moving on to more beautiful flowers. This is a Mandevilla apricot, which is my favorite of the Mandevillas. Isn't that beautiful? They have a very soft peachy, or I guess apricot colored flower on them that does fade into a more yellow color. As these bloom, you'll usually see the two different shades on the plant and it just looks really cool. So I had one of these last year, had it in the grow space, and then I, I think I cooked it. Remember I did a repot on it and put on a trellis and then the new heater was installed around that time and it just, it didn't adjust well. So I grabbed a new one, had to snatch it up. It's one of my favorites and you can already see the other two plants here. These are the last ones, two of the Enset Morellii bananas. Gorgeous plants, love their foliage. Look at that, how neat. What a cool plant. The Morellii, I'll come down lower so you can get a better look at their fun stout growth that they have. Go ahead and pull these out and have a better look at their actual growth habit and though there's a lot of leaves down low so it's going to be harder to see them but the end sets are a banana that doesn't offshoot freely so it's not going to form a big clump like other bananas they have huge massive long leaves that are generally larger than the trunks it's just a cool looking banana and pretty easy to overwinter inside i up until last year had had the same one for a few years and then it snowed on it and it it's the whole big thing and then I couldn't find them for sale anymore because, you know, it's been going off the plants the last few years. You gotta stop for a minute, Turbo. <laughs> Turn on the camera and Turbo goes nuts. That's what it is. They're beautiful bananas. I already know what I'm doing with basically everything I got in this haul today. And I cannot wait to get them planted up. And there will be more talk about them and more depth when it becomes time to do so and to do things with them. But right now, it was more just a matter of getting them. Because last year, couldn't get them. Nobody had them. At least none that I could find. They only had two. And I snatched them up. And even the owner saw me when I was walking out. She, she said those might be the only ones they even get in this year. So that's why I went there, right? Wanted to get the plants while still can. There's going to be tons and tons of trucks with tropicals and things coming in over the next month and a half to two months at the nurseries. You never really know what's going to come in, but the first orders have the priority. So whatever somebody's ordering in for a shipment that might be not coming in until May or June, they may have ordered some of these, but if people place their orders, have them delivered back in March or April, then obviously it, they sell out. That's, I need to shut up now. I've been talking too much, my brain's not working. As things go, okay, the last thing, the fountain. I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I just talked very briefly about it because this is something I've done in the videos multiple times and I didn't really do anything unique with this. I'll link the video below where I talk about what I do with this and it's, it's literally, that's all I did. It's just a different pot, different rocks, and I added lights to the inside. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. And that piece of brick is just sitting there because I put these like tumbled pieces of glass on the inside since I put a light down in the middle, which looks really cool, but the birds usually like to sit on this and bathe and drink, and I thought that might not be that comfortable, so I put a brick there for them to stand on. I'll find a smooth stone or something like that to put in its place. Overall, 
I do think I like it. Things are leveled out. I've been adjusting the flow and trying to reduce splatter. Now that I've done that, I can move the pump and the other things with cords around to the back. There's still some splatter. So I think I may need to put a valve on this pump. I had a different pump in here that wasn't strong enough, so I upgraded and that one's too strong. The back and forth of trying to make it work out. That's all that's going on there. Again, there'll be more on that because in just a few weeks, I'll be filling the space in with the tropicals and have all the plants around. Right now, there's just the sad, cold, hardy tropicals that are out here. This is looking fantastic. Now this mess over here. Need to back up to when I was talking to the cat and the dog and came outside and pointed to the mess and the new pressure washer. I have been working on like really just trying to kind of gut and purge a lot of my old things off the patio. The goal this year is to have nice clean lines where there aren't clusters of things along this side over here. So I'm going to be doing some rearranging, moving a lot of things around, but I've tackled the wall around my hot tub. All of these pots were over around the hot tub area, which I'm gonna wait until next week to go into all of that. The way the weather's been, I don't want to dive into another project and then not be able to finish it and then the end of the video being even weirder than it already is with having to say I'm going to hold off on that project anyways. And you know, it's kind of fun to go ahead and just leave the video at we went plant shopping and then there's a plant haul and oh yeah, hey, look at the fountain. I finished the fountain finally. You would think that cleaning this all up would be an easy thing, but it's not because first I have to come in here and dig this area out, replace the gravel. The pottery gets stored back here, which you can't tell during the summer because there's a big pot here. It's actually worked out as a nice area to store the pottery, but it's just, it's a big shuffle and everything's wet and muddy and I, I don't feel like it right now. And I don't think it's gonna dry out in the next day or so. I actually kind of like getting dirty and muddy when I'm outside, but it just doesn't make sense to be doing all that at the end of the video when I may as well just end it and start over fresh next week with some fun decluttering projects and hopefully doing some spring planters. Oh, I pruned all the dead stuff out of the bamboo. Doesn't that look better? Do you remember what that looked like last week when I got that euonymus hedge planted up? It just, it just, it looked junky. Should have talked about it in the video, but I didn't, but it's just, that's all, okay. All right, that's enough. Got to see lots of pretty things. Got to go to the nursery. So excited that it's that time of year that I can have the plants out, even if it's just brief and only for a little while. It's nice being able to bring them outside and let them enjoy some fresh air. Comment down below, say hi. How's everybody doing? What's going on in your garden? Hey, favorite? hibiscus varieties there are some really cool ones out there like i mentioned the seminal pink is just my favorite of the more common types but I, oh man i don't even know if i could really narrow it down to having like a single favorite of the hibiscus the cotton candy confection perfection that's a pretty good one might need to do a different video on just like favorite hibiscus or fun looking hibiscus or favorite cordolins let me know if you know what this fun big thick boy over here is if you have any idea gosh it's so pretty how beautiful is that? The other thing I liked about that, I know I said I was gonna go, I'm almost done. The other thing that I really liked about this one was that it gives me Stromanthi Trio Star vibes, but it's a cordelin, so it should be much easier to grow in theory. Cordelins come with their own set of issues when you're trying to grow them indoors. They're very prone to rot. Bugs and pests really enjoy them, so there is that. But the Trio Stars, they're so thirsty, whereas these, you can let them go more on the dry side during the winter time. Conversation for another time. Oh, and what are some neat looking caladiums? Do you have any favorites? Comment down below. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye.